Good morning, everybody, and happy Easter Sunday morning. Well, I'm going to tell you, our family misses your family, and we're glad that you can be a part of this this morning. Can't wait to see you guys in person. But this is the next best thing, right? So we're going to celebrate uh, the resurrection of our King this morning. We're going to join together. Even though we're in different homes, we're going to be together and unified today. And we're going to worship this morning on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We had to be safe. We had to be smart. And we had to be creative. But uh, this is the best we've got. And I'm excited this morning to share this song with you. So take a listen to this. This is my daughter sent me this just a few days ago. It's called Living Hope.
everybody. <laughs> well, it's so good to, to be with you remotely as we are practicing this thing called social distancing or, or physical distancing. We, we are realizing how Jesus has slowed us down from our busyness, and we're even somehow or another getting even more connected through this, through this pandemic. Um, I, I, I didn't talk to Pastor Steve that much about, you know, I remember when we were talking about NBC and that course that we had called Pastoring Through a Pandemic, you know, and I don't, I don't remember if he had that one or if I had that one, but uh, here we are, and, and, and God is good, and we recognize that uh, his brother James wrote that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above, and so we're so thankful for our, our time with you in Zanesville. It was a long time ago, it seems, and a lot has happened, but uh, I just want to thank your pastor, Pastor Steve, for the goodness and grace of having us, give us uh, giving us the opportunity to stand in the pulpit and minister a little bit and kind of learn and grow as, as we've continued on. And then you all have sent us off to the, the Oregon coast. So we've been here for what, eight years now? Yeah. Eight years? <laughs> four years at this church. Four years, yeah. at, four years in Brookings uh, and then four years here in Florence. Um, and so I was uh, joking about, it, you know, and my wife is a, a Buckeye, so but she's been she's been converted to 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 uh, duck country, and uh, so we just want to say happy Easter from duck country, and uh, and say God bless you. Uh, we trust you're staying safe, staying staying close to Jesus, and maybe even getting closer to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, and happy Easter. It's it's different. I was having memories, flashbacks today of of growing up in dresden ohio and, and every year we had the white the white patent leather shoes we weren't allowed to wear them before easter but then after easter and i do remember some easters where um had the the bonnet and the dress and the white patent leather shoes and walk and went to easter in the snow so <laughs> that was kind of funny but you weren't allowed to wear those shoes before easter um i miss you i i i we have such fond memories of, of Sainsville, Pastor Steve and Trish, and we just wish you all a happy Easter. It's, we're, learning, we're learning so many things about it not being a church building, that we are the church, no matter where we are, Zanesville, That's Florence, right. Oregon, on the, on the Pacific Ocean, or um, we have friends in other countries that are going through this. And, we are the church no matter where we are. And That's right. The church is not a place that we gather. It is the gathering itself, the ecclesia of Jesus. And uh, he said, I'll build my church. You go make disciples. So we trust that you're learning new ways of discipling one another and provoking one another in love and to do good works. <laughs> Oh, the wonderful 
cross, oh the wonderful cross bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh the wonderful cross, oh the wonderful cross, all who by grace draw near and bless your name. Over the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the Bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace draw near and bless your name. So divine demands my soul, my soul, my all. It's the beauty and the shame. It's the Come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace draw near and bless your name. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the Bless your name, love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my Zanesville First Church of the Nazarene. Happy Easter morning. We greet you this morning from Winchester, Virginia, from Winchester First Church of the Nazarene. That's right, and we want to just give you our very best and warmest Resurrection Sunday greeting. So let's all say together, He is risen. 
Amen. He is risen indeed. Amen. God bless. Church in Nazarene, and I'm glad to do this for you, and God bless each and every one of you, and have a happy Easter. We bring greetings to you from um, Edison, Ohio, from the Moody Wickham family, and um, Daryl's back there with our dog Lucy, and we all say blessings to you, and happy Easter. 
I just wanted to share this quick scripture with you. Psalm 46. This is a, a scripture that God has been bringing to my heart over and over again during this time that we're in um, our stay-at-home order and our seclusion. Um, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We are in this time, but our God has not forgotten us. And so we just wanted to share that with you today. And we send you many, many blessings and happy Easter. Shalom. Happy Easter, everyone. April 12th, 2020. Wow. What a time. What a day. I want to say a special thank you again to Jeff for helping to put all this together. To Dave and Terry and Mallory for the special music today. And to our three special video guests who have at one point in time been involved with this local church and have become such a blessing to others through their ministry that we wanted to incorporate them on this special service. Let me start today by sharing with you some thoughts. December 31st, 2019 in Wuhan City, China. A report was given to the World Health Organization about a new pneumonia-like illness that later would become known as COVID-19. And in case you're wondering where that name came from, the CO stands for Corona the VI for the virus, and D for disease. Coronavirus disease, and the 19 for the year it was first reported. Some have said that because of this, our lives will never be the same again. According to one media resource, as of April 9th, 2020, over one and a half million people in our world have been infected with this COVID-19 virus. 89,474 deaths in the United States, Spain, and Italy. 14,000 plus just in the United States. And that doesn't include the 333,000 and some deaths in China. I guess you could say, for these families, life will never be the same. Maybe it is true, as we gather together on this Easter Sunday morning, life will never be the same again. But as I say that, I am challenged with this thought. That's nothing new for us. Here's what I mean. Today's message, I'm entitled, Eight Days Later. It is a passage of Scripture that comes out of John's Gospel. It is a story about Jesus and his conversation with the disciples. It is a story about one non-believing disciple named Thomas 
finding it hard to believe that there could be anything such as a resurrection. Eight days later, it's the story of the difference that Jesus makes in the lives of people like you and me. I want to read this passage of Scripture to you, starting in the 24th verse of John's Gospel, chapter 20. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands? Put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. Lord Jesus, would you please just be in the hearts and the lives of each one of our people. I know that we can't be together here in the building like we would love to today. But I know that we can be together in the presence of our holy, almighty God. And so that's my prayer today. May we too believe in this resurrection. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Easter is about removing doubt. Can I just say this to you? If you find yourselves in a time in life where doubt is rampant, just trust. Trust in God, trust in His provisions, trust in His promises, and trust in His presence. Thomas had said, unless I see, I will never believe. He was struggling with this. He, he couldn't reason in his mind how this could, this could possibly happen. But eight days later, let me share with you the eight changes that took place. Number one, the scripture tells us that the disciples were inside again. Probably fearful, not really understanding. The scriptures tell us that they were fearful of the Jews and what could happen. It kind of puzzles me a little that even after some of them had had this conversation, they were inside. It, it was almost as if I see this as they have, were keeping all this to themselves. Once again, they were inside. Doors locked. You and I know that that's not the message of Jesus Christ. The message of Jesus Christ is the hope for all eternity. It is the hope for every man and every woman and every child that we can have life and that we can have life again, that we can understand God's message for us, that we can firsthand experience His presence and this hope that He refers to. The second thing was that the doors were locked for safety. And I know in our day and time that, that there are 
events that are going on that churches now that that have to lock their doors for safety. I understand how this relates to our day and time. I remember as a young man growing up in a small town where the church doors were left unlocked all week long in case somebody ever had a desire to come and pray. Things have really changed since then. The third thing that I saw in this passage of Scripture is that Jesus came and stood among them. Now this isn't the first time that Jesus entered in the midst of difficult circumstances, is it? Do you remember your life and my life when we were going through difficulties and we cried out, Oh God, if you could please just help me. Lord, if you would please just change something. If you would just please somehow take control of this. And He did. And I wonder how, how good we've done, how, how well we've done at keeping our promise to Him. The fourth thing is His message. And it goes like this. He says, peace be with you. Isn't that the message that we receive on Easter Sunday? The peace of Jesus Christ through His resurrection, living in our lives and making the difference for us. He also said, do not disbelieve, but believe. This is His calling. This is His message for anyone out there who has never invited Jesus Christ into their heart. For anyone out there who has, has left the faith. For anyone out there who is confused about this. He is calling us. Do not disbelieve but believe. There is no better time than right now. This Easter Sunday morning. To invite Jesus Christ into your heart. To ask Him to forgive your sins. To invite Him to become the God that He wants to be. And create in you the life that He wants you to have. Two messages directed at His disciples that are so relevant for us today. The fifth thing that I see is Thomas's confession. My Lord and my God. You see, that needs to be not only Thomas's confession, that needs to be yours and my confession as well. My Lord and my God, as I stand here on this Easter Sunday, I realize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ not only brought life to Him, but it brought life to me. That today, I stand here as a new person because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The sixth thing, Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are those who have not seen me in person and still believe. You see, that's faith. That, that's the faith that He's calling us to have. That's trusting in Him. Blessed are those who have not seen Him in person and yet believe. You know, this is an opportunity to share our faith. Because this is a statement that says there's no doubt in my life. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is alive. I believe with all my heart that He has, has risen. I believe with all my heart that He has defeated sin and death. I believe with all my heart that He has changed my life. And that needs to be our confession to others today. The seventh thing. The Bible says in that passage of Scripture in verse 30, many other signs in the presence of His disciples which are not written in this book. Many other signs were done. You know, is that not true about us? Have we not seen many times in our lives as we've said those prayers to Jesus, have we not seen many times the way that He's answered the prayers? And how many times has He given us more than we even asked for? It is true for us today. And finally, the eighth thing says this. By believing, you may have life in His name. Folks, I mentioned it earlier today. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that you too may have life. I don't know what you're going through. I know there are a lot of families that are hurting right now. 
I know there are a lot of people that are confused and, and like the disciples, they're not understanding what this is all about. It's a completely different scenario, but it is something common in the way that we respond to it. But I want to tell you this, the same Jesus that responded with faith for those disciples is the same Jesus that's responding to us today to have faith in Him, to trust in Him, to believe in Him. And I pray for those families that have all been somehow in one way or another have been affected by this terrible virus. I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that, that He will make a difference in their lives as well. I want to conclude with one of my favorite passages in the Scripture because it's all about the story of Christ and His message and purpose. It is found in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, and it says this, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And then it explains it a little further. Verse 10, it says, For with the heart one believes and is justified. You see, it is in your heart. I remember as a little child, they, they had the pictures of Jesus knocking on their heart's door and there's no doorknob on the outside because you have to invite Him to come in. It is with the heart that you believe. I pray today in this service that right now, that in your heart you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That in your heart you believe in the presence of Jesus Christ. He is a life-changing God that can make a difference in your life and He makes a difference in my life. And He can continue to change our world if we just trust Him. And then the last part of that verse. It is with the mouth one confesses and is saved. You see this whole repentance thing. This, this whole idea of salvation. Is that we not only admit that we're sinners. We ask Jesus to forgive our sins. He is the only one worthy to do that. He is the only one capable of doing that. But when we say to Him, Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins, He will do that. And then with our mouth, we confess that I am a changed person. God has done something miraculous in my life. I'm a changed person because of it. And that is the testimony that we continue to share with all those that we have influence with today. All those who we may run into somehow today. It is with that message that there is life-changing power through Jesus Christ. And so today on this Easter Sunday morning, it is my prayer that you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is my prayer that you are willing and anxious that, that as soon as we can, as, and even being creative today, we can share the life-saving message of Jesus Christ with others. And it is my prayer that together, you and I will lift up all of those that are involved in this terrible virus, the crisis of their lives. And we will lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will pray, we will pray for His presence and His deliverance once again. All of our lives today are changed because of one sacrifice, that of Jesus Christ. Won't you trust Him today? Won't you just say that little prayer today and invite Him into your life and see the difference that He truly makes? There were so many miracles recorded that they're not even written down in all the books. But I'm telling you, today's resurrection miracle is about your life being changed. That you can follow Jesus Christ. Trust Him today, won't you? Lord Jesus, as we close our Easter service, I want to lift up to you each and every one of the people that have been infected by this virus, each and every one of the families that have been affected by this virus. And I want to lift up to you people in our church, in our neighborhoods, in our community, 
people all around that don't know the peace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Because I believe with all my heart, they will never experience the fullness in this world, in this life, that they can experience until they come to that point of surrender to you. So may we today, Easter Sunday, celebrate the resurrection and may we celebrate the new life that we have in you. And it's all and only because of you. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. God bless everyone. Happy Easter. And I look forward to seeing you again. Because he